Let's get a read on all of this with Ryan Payne of Payne Capital Management. We have Jonas and Max Ferris, and we have Alicia Levine as well, uh, the NY Mellon Investment Management. Um, Alicia, end it with you. Is, is this overdone, uh, or is, is there something to it? Is China an indication of something bigger? So the narrative last year was that the rest of the world was slowing while the U.S. was okay. The reason it's not overdone is that the data out this morning showed, in fact, that the U.S. is slowing as well. And that's really the big fear, that the U.S. is going to import weakness from the rest of the world. And as we saw with Apple this morning, it's going to be mediated through the U.S. companies. you got to wonder if that's the case, Ryan, that all of a sudden, you know, we're hoping to score a trade deal with the Chinese but wouldn't that be a kick if we don't get the bang for the buck from a deal because they're, they're melting? Um, no, I think, I think bottom line is you got to remember, too, that we're still very insulated from the rest of the world. I think it's hard to extrapolate just from Apple, which is one company, in a sector What did you make of that, what, what Apple was saying? Was it blaming China or, or what? I think it's a little blaming. I mean, let's face it. You know, if you look at smartphone uh, sales around the world or shipments, they've been slowing the last couple quarters. They've got stiff competition now from Chinese mobile makers. Right. So I think there's a lot more going on there than just it's a trade war. I think that was kind of laying the blame in one place. And I don't think that's the whole story. You know, Jonas, it reminds me of retailers, right, in the days when they had soft sales and they blamed the weather. Uh, but they'd never credit the sun if they had the weather. <laughs> but, but having said that, other companies will likely pounce on this. Ford already has that it could be a big factor for them driving down the numbers a little bit. Is that a big contagion issue? Uh, I think it's a little blaming the, the China situation. First of all, let's, let's back up a second. This Apple thing, when they a few weeks ago, as you mentioned, when it was worth a trillion dollars, they kind of snuck out the, well, we're not going to break out hands, handset sales numbers anymore. Right. That was a really bad sign. And the stock already went down. And now that was because this was coming, basically. They knew they're in trouble. And that may or may not mean there's a look. Everyone's looking for a canary in the coal mine when you're an investor. And $1,000 handset sales is a good canary in the coal mine if you're forecasting it, right? But the Chinese are not buying those anymore. They don't buy them in India either. Could that, if it's just an economic thing, yes, they're going to have lower sales. The economy's slowing globally. It'll spread to us, maybe, maybe not. It could be an Apple thing, and it could be a tech thing exclusively. And what I mean is the whole concept of a $1,000 smartphone could be going away slowly and will eventually spread to our shores. It could be a place where we're going to have two $300 headsets just like China. Maybe they're going to do privacy stuff. Maybe they'll be free with ads. That's not going to be a world Apple is going to be dominated. And everyone's like, oh, they have their services business. That's a high-regulation business. You can't just keep squeezing more money out of the app center. That's a monopoly business. Fair you enough. are allowed to sell a $5,000 handset. That is an unregulated business because you of competitors. So this is a very touchy situation for the whole app economy that lives off the Apple ecosystem as well. All right. Maybe it was something that Jonas said, but we're getting word now that there's going to be a White House press briefing in just a matter of minutes. Sarah Sanders, uh, when she speaks, will go right there ahead of that. Um, I was mentioning the president. He had called the market plunge yesterday a little glitch. Uh, (laughs) Was it a little glitch? Is this a little glitch? I, I, I think I get the thrust of what he's saying, that things will settle out. What do you think? So I think the market settles out when the earnings finally come in, because we're still at 8% earnings growth for 2019. Nobody believes that. And the market certainly doesn't believe it. Nobody believes that it will be yeah. that, that it'll good be or that weak. It will be that strong. I agree. So if so it's less than that, they're, they're right to sell again. What you're seeing now is the market pricing in essentially a 4% earnings growth year. You don't get a huge multiple on 4% earnings growth. And, by the way, we haven't actually priced in any reduction in the energy patch. If you think of energy mm-hmm. sitting at $45 a barrel for three or four months, those earnings are coming in. So you could get very close to no earnings growth for next year. That's what the market's pricing in. There are a lot of people follow, you know, looking at earnings on forward or in reverse and say that the market's gotten a lot cheaper. Has it gotten more affordable to you? And is this overdone or what? I mean, I want to go as insanely cheap at these levels. Come on, we're 14 times forward earnings. I think, you know, to Alicia's point, we're, we're, we're basically pricing in worst case scenario. Um, and I mean, if you look just you but the to- average is around 16 to 18, right? Um, I think, yeah, 15, if I'm 15.7, if we be exact, uh, yeah, but so you're close, right. <laughs> but 14, I mean, come on, we're splitting hairs here, right? Got so it. 14 times earnings, I mean, you have dividend yields going up next year. You have revenue going up at about 5%, which that's organic growth. I just feel like, and you look outside, 
we're not going into a recession. So I just yeah. think we're at a point here right now where it's this big dislocation between what the economy is doing and what the market's doing. Uh, I think investors were thinking that's what they said in 2000 and 2006, too. Um, I, I also feel that... Um, but does it feel like that to you? No, you know, I, this could be this 20% correction that comes back really strong. Like in 98, we had that. In 2011, with the euro crisis, um, I do think what's made the stocks cheap isn't it's so much the t- almost 20% drop we just had briefly was that interest rates have gone from three and a, three and a quarter tenure down to 2.55 today. That is a very dramatic, we're going into a recession move that makes stocks, you know, Apple almost yields that But would it make the point. Federal Reserve less disposed to hiking rates this year, or, or, or at least the first half of the year? So I think what we learned from the last Fed meeting and press conference is that the Federal Reserve has its own models, and it's yeah. really less attuned to the financial markets. So even though the they market... They always say that, they, but they, they're not ignoring this, they're, are they? They're not, they're not ignoring it, but they're going to be more focused on the unemployment rate and the wage data, because yeah. that's what their models predict. I will say this, that the tenure having come off the highs is actually very good for the real economy, and it's great for housing and well, better yeah, that for was autos. the same haven today. Yes. Do you expect it to continue to be? I, I think just the fact that I think we slightly have an accommodative Fed at this point. I mean, I kind of feel like they are pandering a little bit, if I was to be so bold. Um, but I also think that having low interest rates is great for the economy, and now down to like 2.5 or 2.6%. It's amazing. Look, amazing. I think people liked the, the president's comments more when the market was going up, but he was right about interest rates going up too high. And it's, it's very, look, if the Federal Reserve was raising rates because they thought inflation was going to take off, that was a big mistake they made. They might have caused a recession. If they were doing it because we were playing let's count the trillion dollar tech companies and they didn't want to start another bubble like 2000, 2006, then that was a smart move. But we don't really know what they were thinking at this stage of the game. So when you are looking at this, none of you are envisioning an immediate turnaround here. So three weeks ago, I thought we could have a decent start to the year because you had all that tax loss selling in December and, and you just had everybody running for the hills. But I would say that with the start to January, it's only been two days. I think it's going to be a roller coaster year. So I think we go down first and I think we move up later in the year. All right. Does shutdown have any effect on anything that's still going on? I don't know. That's par for the course, right? I mean, the last five shutdowns, the market rallied. I think it's irrelevant. You're a very jaded young man. (laughs) All right. uh, All right. We'll see what's happening here.